Hello, I'm Randy Godat from Leader Evaporator. We're here in northern, uh, northwestern Vermont um, at the Double D Sugar House. We're gonna do a, a little video on the inside here of, uh, of the boys boiling. Um, the season has actually come to an end, but we're, uh, we're gonna be boiling some water so you can see how the evaporator works. I'm here with uh, Nate DeRosa at Double D Sugar House. Um, we're going to speak about his evaporator that he's using here. He's got an Inferno Arch, um, American set of pans, and you Matt, you top 300? Yep, top about 300 and trees you've right been, um, you've been sugaring for seven, eight years? Yep. Seven. You said you started in the middle of high school. Yep. Um, I took a little bit of an interest in sugaring in high school. I went to Missisquoi Valley Union High School, and for those of you that don't know, yep. um, they have an ag program up there where they have a little 2 by 6 uh, They tap some trees around the school, and basically they just kind of teach the kids that don't have an interest in sugar and how to sugar, how to make syrup, and that's kind of where I got my maple bug from. So yep. I decided to start doing it at home, and here we are today. This is yep. where it's gotten to. Yeah, and you're hungry looking for more taps. Yep, looking to get some more trees in the next couple <laughs> years. I see that... Uh, I see you're running an automatic draw off also. Yep. Um, stainless steel hoods over both of the pans. You've got kind of the elite here for a, you know, for a crafter evaporator. Yeah, it's a little bit more uh, fancy than what some people would use for a two by six, but one of the things that I like about having the auto draw system is just, it tells you when you've got syrup and it takes a little bit of the work out of doing it manually. But the other trick that I've learned is stoking up your arch. Um, if you watch the numbers on the auto draw, it'll kind of tell you, okay, when do I need to put more wood in and when do I have enough? Yep. Especially when you're firing it up. If you've got another set of hands that can kind of open the door and watch that auto draw, that's kind of how we like to do it here. Um, you don't drop your temperature as much yep. with the auto draw. And the other thing with that too, is if you use a slide, um, you can actually shut the slide. Every time you fire. Every time you fire yep. and you don't lose your syrup and it doesn't go back into your other compartments. Correct. Yep, that's a good feature. Very good feature. <laughs> Throw it back at you. The Inferno Arch is a, a forced air arch with an airtight door. Um, this one happens to have a window in it so you can see into the uh, firebox so you yep. can see how your fire is doing. Um, but it's a lot hotter fire because you're supplying extra oxygen to the fire so you're going to get more BTUs out of your wood. Um, the, the pans that are on here are American drop flu. Um, which means the flue pan has drop flues. They go down inside the arch um, seven and a half inches, um, which gives you good, good BTU transfer because the heat is direct on the flues. We have uh, two hoods covering the pans, one of them being suspended that's taking the, the steam off the syrup pan and one being covered over the flue pan which exhausts all the steam out from the flue pan to keep it work workable here in the sugar house. You have a neat little thing here that I really like. Um, I like to have a thermometer in every compartment so I know what's going on in my syrup pan and you're just so you don't get caught with a real large batch of syrup, this little this uh, five inch dial thermometer here will tell you if you have syrup in that second compartment and it could save your evaporator or save your front pan from being burnt. Very good, very good idea. The American style has an external regulator box with a, a float with a, with a crank system to be able to quickly adjust your float level if need be. But the nice smooth thing about the this type of a regulating system, usually once it's set at the beginning of the season, you never have to touch it. It stays yeah. the same all the time. Very, very good system. So one of the things that you can see uh, behind me is that we put this brace from our back wall to our side wall. And one of the reasons that we wanted to do that was is when we first set this up, we had a four by four that went from here to the floor. 
and it worked really well. But one of the problems we found with doing that was we didn't have enough storage to put our sugar and supplies and stuff under in the tank. It was always in the way. It was in the way. So we didn't have room to put our syrup jugs or our tubing or any of our fittings. So my sugar and partner Matt and his father actually came up with this bracing system. Um, it's just a piece of, I would say probably two and a half inch angle iron. Um, he welded it together and we just took some uh, half inch shredded rod, ran it up through to the ceiling with a knot on the top. It's a very good idea. Very good idea. But you always see something unique. Every single sugar house has something uniquely done in it. That, yes. That was the sugar maker's idea. I love it. <laughs> it's pretty simple. <laughs> yeah. So what I did here is, uh, when I first started sugar and I used to use the cone filters and the pre-filters, right. um, I was only making two to three gallons a day. So what I did is I took a two cone, I had a frame made, put it on some wheels with an extendable handle. So now when I draw my syrup, uh, I just draw it out of the rig right into the cannon unit. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're done for the day, I'll, uh, I'll heat it up if it's gotten cool in the cannon unit. I'll put it back in here. I will mix it with filter aid. Um, filter aid will break down the niter and the sugar sand to make so, it easier. So you filter it once at the yep. end of your boil. So at the end of my boil, I filter it once. Yeah. Um, very good. Very we'll good run idea. Run it through the filter press. Um, the cone filters work, you know, just as good as a filter press. But for anybody that wants to can with glass or they just want a little bit of a clearer syrup, the filter press will take out a little bit of that niter that you yes. can't get out of those synthetic filters. So you won't filters. have cloudy or any sediment in your glass. Yes, That's exactly. A good, very good idea. Yeah. So you, you, once you put it through the filter press, you put it back in your yep. canner to can it? Yeah, as it's gone through the filter press, it'll go back mm -hmm. into the canner where we'll reheat it back up to canning temperature, yep. which is around 180 to 190 degrees, and we'll put it into half gallon into or your gallon jugs. Into your syrup containers. Nice. Very nice operation. Thank you. One of the reasons that I went with Leader Products in general is I've been an employee there since I've started sugaring, uh, but I also chose Leader because just of the quality of the product and the craftsmanship. Um, I know all the guys in the building that craft them, they do an excellent job. Um, and they're very proud of their they're work. They're very proud of their work. There's yeah. not anything that comes out of there that yeah, they're not happy with it, that it doesn't get out to the door to the customer. Um, just because they're proud of their stuff. 